Today, we will learn about Excel for genealogy. I'm your trainer, Lori Coffey. All right, you may want to create even more complex formulas on your own. Great. But let me show you a little issue you may have forgotten about. Let's see this formula where I expect the answer to be 110. Wait a minute. Or you could learn the mathematical order of operations. Every mathematician and Excel knows that parentheses are always read first by Excel. Always by any mathematician. Then followed by exponents. I never have exponents in a formula, so that's not a problem. Then it goes through and reads every multiplication and does it. And then division in that order using those tools. And finally, addition and then subtraction. The mnemonic device is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That'll help you remember the order of operations. So how can we tell Excel to do additions first? Isn't that what we wanted it to do? The addition first. So how do we tell it to? What will it do first? Parentheses. Put it in parentheses. Now it gives us the answer we expected. Let's say we've created a database that has been normalized so that the first and last names are in separate columns, but we'd like to have it appear in one column. Excel can make it look like it's back together in one column with the help of a little code using symbols you already know. The ampersand, also known as the and symbol, and quotes. Start in a new column and enter your header. Then, just like with any formula, enter an equal sign and select the first name cell. To join them together, enter the ampersand. Then select the last name cell. But wait, something's wrong. What's wrong? It didn't add a space between the first and last names. How do we do that? With the quote marks. Quote space quote says, show the space, whatever is in the quotes. So anytime you want to put a, a word in a formula, just put it inside quotes. Then add ampersands around the quote space quote. It might sound complex, but it's really easy once you see it. And then copy it. When you're sure it's right, double click the autofill handle to copy it all the way down. We've learned the basics of formulas and a couple of genealogy uses for them. Now we want to get the data without the manual data entry. Let's learn to import data. It's a little tricky, but easy once you know how. Do you hate data entry too? <laughs> Is it just me? Especially if it's already online. Don't enter data, copy it. Like this one from census.gov. Click and drag to select the data that you want, then control C to copy it. Then in Excel, click in one cell only, like the first cell, and paste using control V for Velcro. Format as needed, like with the comma and no decimal points. Make the column width wide enough so as needed with a double click. How easy. On the web, if you sel can select the data, you can copy and paste it in Excel like this genealogical list of German terms that I found, which is very helpful. Simply select the data, then control C, then an X cell and one ping only, excuse me, one cell only, control V. Or this list of ship passengers from Norway. I click the icon to open the 1840 list. Notice the hyperlinks, those are all hyperlinks. When I copy and paste the list into Excel, they're still intact. But then in a new column, I copy and paste the data as values only. Remember, right click, and we have that option. So now it doesn't have the links. Then I use text to columns to split the first and last name, and I turn the filtering on. I also merged three years of data. If you bring in multiple lists, paste them all at the bottom without a, a, a blank row with uh, each previous list and then format. And that way all the formatting will happen to all of them. If the complete date that you imported shows up as a number, that's the serial number or the days since January 1st, 1900. Generally, you can change the data type to date for it to revert back. If you want dates to look like this, 
You can with custom formatting. It's a multi-step process I won't waste your time on because Excel doesn't recognize dates before 1900 and I and won't maintain the formatting for you. I wish they would have had historians on their development team. There's a lot of data out there to copy, but perhaps your biggest finds to populate your Excel database are from your own family tree. In Family Tree Maker, you can export your reports right to Excel. Let's see how. In the Publish tab, I create a report and click Share. I see several options to send, which means email, or export, which means save on your computer as a different type of file. One option is CSV, not CVS. <laughs> it's hard to keep those straight. It stands for Comma Separated Values. Remember when we normalized the database earlier with the wizard and it asked what delimits or separates the data? Even though the CSV file automatically opens in Excel, a yellow warning says that CSV is not as robust as Excel and some features might be lost. So be sure to click under the File tab, Save As. Under Save As Type, see all the Excel options, but until you understand the differences, use the first one. Excel Workbook. As an Excel workbook, instead of a CSV file, you can now use all the formatting you know. Bold the header, center the header, but there's got to be a better way to delete all these extra blank rows, and there is. Turn on your filter funnels, then sort them to make all the blank rows show up at the top of the list, then select and delete them all at once. You probably could make them show up at the end of the list and not worry about deleting them. <laughs> This is the way I've always done it. That's just one report of many you can export from Family Tree Maker to Excel. Ancestry has its uses in Excel too. If you can search it, you can copy and paste it, and you can put it into Excel. Let's see how. For example, in an individual, I go to Tools and select Print. See how it looks more like data now? The other way, it looked like just a, a website, but now it looks like data. I click and drag over the data to select it, then copy it, then in Excel, one ping only, in one cell only, <laughs> paste it. That's references to the hunt for Red October when he says one ping only. Do you remember that? Anybody remember that? No? Okay. You can do this in your sleep by now, I hope. I wanted a way to contact every cousin that might be descended from my third great-grandfather, Hans, so I could invite them to a family reunion. This one is a lot more labor-intensive. In Ancestry, under Search, I select Public Member Trees. I search to find Hans, and I see he's in 86 public trees, so I click to view all. Then I copy the tree link and paste it in a workbook. 86 times. <laughs> I couldn't find a quicker way to do that. I review each tree to see if it's a good candidate as a descendant. If they're a good match, I get their contact information. And I got more people at the reunion as a result. It's also great if you're starting a family Facebook page too, to be able to find people who, who's interested. Did you learn something? You did. <laughs> How to think through your options to make the exact database that meets your specific needs with examples and tips to personalize them.